Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome to this program where we want to honor and celebrate our late Reverend Mrs. Juliana Abedogua. The program will start really now. We'll be starting the program. We'll be commencing the program with the opening prayer to be said by Reverend Mrs. Funke Mbebu.
acknowledge you as our God and we know that you do all things well thank you Lord for the purpose for which we are gathered here today thank you Lord for the home going of your daughter Reverend Mrs. Juliana Abiodungua thank you Lord for the privilege of interacting with her individually and collectively in one way or the other the Bible says it's better to go to the house of mourning than the house of feasting because wisdom will be learned Holy Spirit we invite you here this morning to take control of everything that will be done that by the time we are living here, that we will apply wisdom. We will number our days that we might apply our hearts to wisdom. Holy Spirit, we ask for your impact upon every life through what will be done here this day in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we ask for your impact. We ask for your impact that we all go out of this place rededicating ourselves to God allowing you to rule our lives allowing you to do whatever you want to do in our lives to your glory have your way Holy Spirit glorify Jesus in this place today in Jesus name we pray Amen. praise the Lord Praise the living Jesus. Let me share, share a Bible passage with us. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 says, But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. I'm saying this because gloom is not allowed in this gathering. Our sister has gone to be with her maker and she's in a better place. So let's cheer up place while we go into the him. It's on page page three of our bulletin. It is well with my Sorry, preach for it is well with my soul.
Christ, we receive the body of our beloved sister, late Reverend Mrs. Juliana Abiodu Gunwa for burial. Amen. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live and whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. John eleven twenty five to 26. Neither again will they hunger. Never again will they test. The sun will never beat upon them. Nor any scourging. Nor any scourging heat. Revelation seven sixteen. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live or we die, we are 
the Lord. Amen. Amen. Romans 14, 8. I know that my Redeemer lives and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though this body be destroyed, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Job chapter 19 verse 25 and 26. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 38 and 39. We brought nothing into this world and it is certain we carry nothing out. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 7 and Job 1 verse 12. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. So say the, the Spirit. They rest from their labors. Revelations 14 verse 13. We give God praise for the life of our beloved Joel and Jem. And we salute her. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. While we are still standing, let's welcome the praise and worship team to take us to the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bible says that in all things we just give God thanks. I want us to rise on our feet as we give God some soft quality praise. Hallelujah. Come on. Put those hands together. Come on. One, two. Come on now. Let's start to rejoice. Hallelujah. My mama is in the bosom of the Lord Jesus right now. Come on. Yeah. I say, Lord, you are so good. Blessed be your name. Lord, you are so nice. Blessed be your name. He never, he never knew the Lord. On earth, on earth, you reign forever. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Let me hear you. In heaven, in heaven you are the Lord. On earth you reign forever. Oh Lord, how great the world. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Let me hear you say, Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are so good. I can't hear your congregation. Come on, say. Blessed be your name. Say, Lord. Jesus, I am. Emma Bami Rabba, 
Oba Ugo Oba Terebe
Blessed be your holy name. Lift your hands up, everybody. Come on, I need somebody to just worship him. Come on now, worship him. Just worship him. If you have nothing to worship him for, worship him for the life of Mommy G. Come on now, just worship him. Come on now, worship him. Come on, just worship it. Glorious God, beautiful, excellent. I bow before your truth. Congregation, help me say, I can say, Glorious God, beautiful.
because you have inhabited our worship this morning, we we'll give you all glory, we we'll give you all honor. Be the exalted, O Lord. For in Jesus Christ's name we have worshipped. Praise the Lord. You may have your seats. While we welcome Olufemi Ajayi to take the first Bible reading. Hello everyone. Um, the first Bible reading is from Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or even you had formed the earth and the world. From everlasting to everlasting, you were God. You turn man to destruction and say, Return, O children of men. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past. And like a watch in the night, you carry them away like a flood. They are asleep. In the morning, they are like grass which grows up. In the morning, it flourishes and grows up. In the evening, it's cut down and withers. For we have been consumed by your anger, and by your wrath we are terrified. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. For all our days have passed away in your wrath. We finished our years like a sigh. The days of our lives are 70 years, and if by reason of strength they are 80 years, yet the boast is only labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For as the fear of you, so is your wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Return, O oh Lord, how long, and have compassion on your servants. O oh, satisfy us early with your mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days in which you have afflicted us, the years in which we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants and your glory to their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Amen. Praise the Lord. His son-in-law, the husband of Dr. Zion. Let's welcome... Olajide Jato, the husband of Shion, for the second Bible reading. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, pastors. Um, I'll, I'll be reading from the book of Second Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 1 to 10. The King James Version of the Bible, if you're reading um, from your Bible. It says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so, be, be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Verse 4. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that would we be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath worked us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Verse 6. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. And verse 10, the final verse, he says, For we must all appear before the, ju before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in this body according to that he had done, whether good or bad. May God bless the reading of his word. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. We continue with the service as we welcome uh, daughter-in-law 
to Mami Gunwa. That is the wife of Kenny Gunwa. We welcome Amalola Gunwa to take the third Bible reading. Hello. Okay. Thank you. The third Bible reading is taken from the book of First Thessalonians, four fourteen to seventeen. I read, "For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in Him." According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord. We certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive are left, will be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. That's how we we'll meet our mommy. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. The Lord will bless his word that we have heard in our hearts in Jesus' name. Let's be upstanding as we will be taking the next hymn, Bless Assurance. It's on page six. Just 
descended, angels descending, break from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love, and this is my story. This is my story. Oh, this is my song. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior. All the day long. All the day long. This is my story. This is my story. Praising my Savior, praising my Savior, oh, all the day in Jesus name praise the Lord please have your seats we are on page 6 and it's time to welcome mommy's daughter Olua Shongua to give us a synopsis of mommy's life and time Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, I'd be taking the biography uh, of my mom, and it was uh, written by my dad. <laughs> um, the love of my life, my better half. Reverend Mrs. Juliana Abiodugunwa Ni Fadeli was born on 1st of January. 1958 in Kabatown, Kogi State, 
to the illustrious Chief S. M. Fadile family. She attended St. Mary's Catholic Primary School, Kappa from town, Kappa town from where she proceeded to St. Monica's Catholic Secondary School, also in Kappa. From where she proceeded to Queen's College, Ellori, Quara State, where she did her West Africa School Certificate Examination and passed in flying colors in 1975. She proceeded to the School of Basic Studies of the Quara State College of Technology for her A-levels examinations, after which she proceeded to Great University of Ibadan, where she had a first degree in BA Honors English in 1981. After which, she went for one year national youth service. She served in NNPC headquarters then in Falomo, Ikoi, Lagos. At the end of her youth service, she was employed into federal civil service as an administrative officer and posted to the Ministry of Transport, where she was posted to the Maritime Department of the Ministry. In her urge to improve herself, she had the opportunity to go for master's degree in marine management at the Dalhousie University in Halifax, Canada, which she completed in March 30th, 1990. She also attended the World Maritime University in Malmo, Sweden from 1991 to 1993, where she obtained her second master's degree in general maritime administration on the fifth day of December, 1993. How I met my wife. It's by God's divine providence and plan that I met her. I talent sported her as a young boy in my senior years. Her birthday, which happens to be the 1st of January, in one of many, many birthday celebrations, I was invited to her birthday. Along the line, where the birthday party was going on, there was this game we played on that fateful day. The game was boys pulling one of their shoes or slippers, then girls will pick the shoe they prefer or they liked. As providence will have it, she picked my slippers. As such, she had chosen me to dance with her in the party, and that was how it started. For years, I did not toast her, but just sending complimentary cards and greeting cards to her. Comments like, you are very beautiful, and success greeting cards. Finally, I delivered my manifesto to her when she was eventually admitted into the same school I was already doing my A-levels in 1977. I seized the opportunity to assist her in settling down in the school, to inform, uh, to in settling down in the school uh, to inform her of taking her around to complete her registration. To cut a long story short, after three days of settling down in her hostel, I went to visit her in her room. As she was seeing me off back to my hostel, I told her straight on that I wanted her to be my wife. Note, not girlfriend. She replied me that I should give her time to pray about it. After three or four days, I went to her again. She responded, she responded that she is yet to hear from God. So I went back to my hostel. And about a week later, I went again, and she told me she had accepted my proposal. We both courted each other for seven years without any serious intimacy until we did the traditional aspect of our marriage. We got married on December 23rd, 1982. We are blessed with three amazing biological children who are all happily married and thriving in their chosen paths. By the special grace of God, we are all also blessed with seven amazing grandchildren, all of which Abiodun was privileged to see and love before her demise. She was a fully demoted, devoted and committed wife and mother, and even more so extremely generous with her grandkids, who all fondly called her G-Mom. May her, her godly soul rest in peace. Throughout, throughout, after God to me, she was next in my life. I'm missing her sorely. Biodunye, as I called her, remains my better half. Please don't abandon us that you left behind, particularly myself and the three beautiful children and their families that God has blessed us with. We know you'll continue to supplicate for us. You are there with the Father. I will forever appreciate you. Her ministry and calling. Reverend Mrs. Juliana Abiodungunwa was born into a Catholic family. From a very young age, she sought after the things of the Lord. And at the age of seven, Juliana received her first Holy Communion and continued to thrive in the things of the Lord. However, she knew there was more and continued to thirst for more. Reverend Mrs. Abiodungunwa and her family joined the New Generation Bible Church in 1994 through the Hour of Decision TV program uh, of the church hosted by our late father and the Lord Bishop, Dr. Godwin Elomobo. Shortly after their return to Nigeria from overseas, since then she remained dedicated, focused, faithful, and deeply committed to the good, to, to God and the New Gen Commission until her transition to glory on the 12th of December, 2022. Her growth in faith and knowledge of the word of God was a rapid one. 
She was committed to her spiritual growth and made sure she attended all discipleship ministry and leadership training. In February 2007, she was appointed a pastor in New Gen, and a few years later, she became the associate resident pastor of the Overcomers Parish in Victoria Island, Lagos. She continued to grow exponentially in the things of the Lord by the grace of God and was ordained a reverend in 2014. Despite her outstanding achievements in the secular world, both within the public and private sectors as director in the Maritime Labor Services, she remained humble, completely obedient, and loyal to the leadership of the ministry and her local parish. She was always actively involved in activities to enhance and advance God's work, especially in New Gen. She was an, she was an asset, an exemplary leader, and role model to many. Today, we celebrate Reverend Mrs. Abiodungwa's beautiful and inspiring life. It was as if she knew her time on earth would be short, that she did everything with speed and accuracy. Membership of professional, national, and international bodies. She was member of Nigerian Chamber of Shipping. She was member of the Elders Forum of Worcester in recognition uh, of her exemplary contributions to the body's objectives. She was member of the Order of Good Time, Lord Roger de Bon Toms, Nova Scotia, founded in 1606. She was member of Bedford Institute of Oceanography. She was given a Certificate of Merit Award for Outstanding Service to Nimasa and the Nation in 2018. She was a consultant to the International Maritime Organization. Gunwa Juliana Abiodunwa was promoted to Assistant Director Administration by the Federal Civil Service Commission in January 2005. Mrs. Gunwa J.A. was the... Creator, with you diligently Savior. Finally, good night, daughter, friend, and servant of the Most High God, Pastor Joseph Olumayawagunwa. Thank you. Good. Um, we will welcome Pastor Olumayawagunwa to give us harmonical rendition. When we had the uh, evening of tribute, he did a marvelous job with that machine that many of us call a uh, mouth organ. Let's once together to welcome Pastor Lumayo Agua. Good afternoon, pastors, ministers of God, <clears throat> and the congregation. You are welcome, and we thank you for coming. God bless you all.
Praise the Lord. As little as that matching is, some of us are very adept at playing with our phone. But something as this we can't handle it. May God help all of us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. The next on the list is Gram Grandma's favorite verse. Luke chapter 1 verse 7 to be taken by Jesus treasure Ajayi. reading Luke chapter 1 verse 37 for with God nothing shall be impossible Thank you. praise the Lord it's time for us to listen to, to this exhortation and to handle it is Reverend Andy Napodia of the New Generation Bible Church. God bless you. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Please say something nice to your neighbor. Make sure that neighbor is smiling. We are not here to mourn. Hallelujah. If the neighbor has not said anything nice to you, you can change your seat. My seat is available. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we pray? Father Lord, we bless you this morning. We ascribe all praise, all honor, and all glory to your name. Besides you, there is no other. Lord, speak through me and bless your children. Comfort every one of us. And let your name and your name alone be exalted in Jesus' mighty name. Mommy, good morning, ma. National coordinator, I respect you, sir. My senior pastors and all the other pastors in the house, from New Gen and without, you are all welcome. And to everyone here, I say God bless you all real good in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. It's going to be a very short one. And the title is, When God Calls. Hallelujah. When God Calls. We all sing this song. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. I'll be somewhere waiting for my God. I'll be somewhere waiting. I'll be somewhere waiting. I'll be somewhere waiting for my God. When he calls you, where will you be? It's easy to sing, but when God says now your time is up, there's a time God will call every one of us and we must answer whether we like it or not. It's not a question of being old or being sick. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be a rich person, you can be a poor person. If he calls you, everything is left behind. Hallelujah. Word of God tells me that a good name is better than riches. Your good name is what will take you to heaven after accepting Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Let's turn our Bibles to Genesis. It's the Lord. Three, I'll read nine to twelve. 
Praise the Lord. Just a minute, please. I read. And it says, And they heard the sound. Sorry. Then the Lord called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. That is how we make excuses when we fall short of the glory of God, of his commandments. When he calls you, will he find you wanting? Or will he find you prepared? Praise the Lord. It is time for us to talk to ourselves. The word of God says, if we judge ourselves, we will not be judged. Thick darkness. Praise the Lord. So what you do, what I do, he knows. No pretense. You can pretend to me, you can pretend to your neighbor. But you cannot pretend to God when he calls you. Reverend Gunwa, she's been called. Praise the Lord. And you know the world is a very small place. I have a cousin that works with Nimasa also. Is one of their lawyers there. And he told me that Reverend Gua was a good woman. Praise the Lord. She never knew. This is the proud and gives grace to the humble. Are you humble? When he calls you, is he going to find you a humble person or an arrogant person? The word of God says he receives the proud and he gives grace to the humble. When he calls, how we be our state? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ecclesiastes 3. 1 to 8 says there's a time and season for everything. A time to live and a time to die. Yes, we are not happy because she has gone, but this world that we are in is a transient place. Nobody's going to stay here forever. Am I right? Do you want to stay here forever? Hallelujah. So if you don't want to stay here forever, work out your salvation with fear and trembling so that by the time he calls, you know you are going to a better place. Like she has gone to a better place. I'm very sure. She was humble. Though she was high up. But she could relate with everybody. Both the low and the high. How do you relate with your fellow man? Do you look down on anybody? This belongs to my class. To my class. This one. Now my boy. Nobody's your boy. We are all God's children. God does not have any grandchild. We are all God's children. Praise the Lord. So it is time for us to begin to look inwards and begin to make amends where we have fallen short of his glory. He says, call upon me in the time of trouble and I will answer you. When you are living in sin, it's a time of trouble. When you are living in sin, it is a time for, of trouble. Because when you die, you will bust hell open. That is not your portion in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let me hear you believe in amen. amen. 
We all want to make heaven, but there's a price to pay. Yes, the children, they are not happy. My senior brother here, he said, why did God not take him? Sir, God is with you and your children and your grandchildren in Jesus' name. I lost my mom before I was five. He has kept me. By God's grace, I'm in my 60s. Praise the Lord. So God has sustained me with sustain and every one of you in Jesus' name. Let me hear a bigger amen. amen. When he calls you, will you be in the clubhouse? When he calls you, will you make excuses like Adam? Adam just transferred the blame immediately. Sharp Alec. I greet you, sir. This is our pastor from Ireland. Fortunately, my younger sister worships in this church. The world is a very small place. Very small place. Praise the Lord. So there is nothing we do that can be hidden. He will call us one day. That day can be today, the day of salvation. Praise the Lord. Let me just take a scripture and we'll be done. Praise the Lord. Please turn with me to Revelation 21. If I was uh, in my branch, I will call Pastor Lashinde. You know, let's put our hands together for him. Hallelujah. A very dedicated man of God. Hallelujah. From here, he will be going to his office. Praise the Lord. That's how dedicated he is. 21, 4 to 5 says. Behold. The tabernacle of God is with men. And shall dwell with them. And they shall be his people. God. Himself will be with them. And be their God. 4 says. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes there shall no there shall be no more death nor sorrow nor crying there shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away amen, amen. no more tears look at how beautiful this coffin is but compared to heaven look at how beautiful her dress is I believe purple represents royalty. Am I right? When we go to heaven, all these things, they are just like the things we buy as second hand in, in Nigeria. Heaven is indescribable, the beauty. You cannot go to heaven and want to come back to this earth. And I know if God gives Reverend Gu an, an option now, do you want to go back to meet your family or you want to continue to stay in heaven? She will say, my Lord Jesus Christ, I want to follow you everywhere you go. Where and why? Because she's in a better place. My prayer for every one of us this morning is that when it is time for us to leave this earth, we'll all make heaven in Jesus' name. There's only one way we can make heaven. And that way is through our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. If you say there is no Christ, most people that don't even worship God, when they are in deep trouble, maybe they have an incurable disease, they call unto the Christ they do not believe in. Am I right? That tells you that Christ is the reason why we are living. We are created to worship him. So anything you do outside Christ is just a wasted venture. Yesterday, 
I went to Aulowos town. A very prominent man of God was buried. Very prominent, very wealthy. And they said a lot of lofty things about him. At the reception, Ebenezer Bay was there playing. What can be said about you and I? It is God in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ that does the transformation. The word of God says, by strength shall no man prevail. On our own, you cannot do it. You just have to allow Christ into your life and he will begin to remold you. After breaking you, he remolds you and he begins to walk through you and in you. The man you see here was not like this before. It's only God that has changed me. At a particular time in my life, I had 11 girlfriends. I'm telling you the truth. When I even went to the house of God, it was to look for a girl. And I was arrested by the word of God. So, if it's partying, I've partied. It doesn't pay. It's only your faith and your trust in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that can make you happy. There's no fulfillment in any other thing because you always desire for more. We are insatiable. But with God on your side, the spirit of contentment is brought into your life. Praise the Lord. So, if you are yet to accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, this is the right time Mommy Gunwa listened to a man of God and before she passed, herself and the family continued to worship in that church. Yes, she had gotten to know the Lord before she joined New Gen. If there's nothing good about Christ, she will not continue worshiping Christ. And that's why we are celebrating her life today. Because we know she has gone to a better place. Where there is no sorrow. Where the glory of God lightens the place. No moon, no sun. Where there is no tear, where there is no pain. Where there is joy unspeakable. That's where she is today. My prayer for you and I is that we will all make heaven. I said we will all make heaven. We'll all make heaven. We'll all make heaven. We'll all make heaven. And at the last day, we will meet with her. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you are here to accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, this is the best time, please. Can you just indicate by putting your hands up? You are yet to know him. I'm not going to call you to the front. It's between you and your maker. You have not surrendered your life to Christ before and you believe this is the right time to do it it is not a time to be ashamed it's a time to put the devil to shame praise the Lord the devil may be speaking nonsense to your ears you are highly pleased though you won't embarrass yourself it's better to embarrass yourself in the presence of God than to go to hellfire and even accepting Christ in the first place is not embarrassing yourself is giving glory to the Almighty. Amen? If there's no hand up, we will pray. Can we bow down our heads as we pray? Father Lord, we thank you for a time like this. Behold your children. They have come to honor our late sister, reverend mother, grandmother, reverend Mrs. Abiodungunwa. Lord, because they've come to honor her, honor everyone that is here in return in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Make every crooked way straight for them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father Lord, your word says there's a way that's made right unto a man, but the end thereof is the way of destruction. None of us will go the way of destruction in the name of Jesus Christ. Father Lord, I cover all these ones with your precious blood. It shall be well with them. Spirit soul and body in the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. 
For in Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. If you know you love the Lord, please can you stand up? Let your hands be above your heads, even as you clap unto him. That's our demonstration to show that we love God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you all. I love you, but I know God loves you more. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. May the oil of God upon you never dry in Jesus' name. At this point in time, we welcome Sheon Mwajato to render Onishe Iyano a special number. Uh, good morning, afternoon again, everybody. I'm going to make a quick disclaimer. So, uh, the last time that I picked up my saxophone was five years ago, actually. It was the 20th of January, 2018. It was five years ago. And it was on behest of my mom, actually. She had asked me to play for her 60th birthday uh, celebration. And I had told her I didn't want to do it because I'm not fond of doing it. It's my favorite thing to do. And she had insisted. And I, um, I had gone there and made a complete show of myself because it was an absolute disaster. And I gave out to her very seriously and told her I wasn't going to do it again. And I meant it. And so I left my saxophone at home and didn't bring it with me. And when I returned, um, and I haven't picked it up since then, but um, today I just want to honor her because I know that she would have liked me to play it one more time for her. So um, I'm not an expert. I say all of that story to tell you that I'm not an expert. So please uh, plead on the Holy Spirit, plead to the Holy Spirit on my behalf um, because I haven't done this in five years, but I, I love you, Mama. Uh, Certainly a better singer than I am a saxophone player, so I'll just sing. Thank you very much. You did well. 
the notes you strung together. How many of us can try that? Praise the Lord. We continue with the service, but before then, let me recognize the presence of Dr. Mrs. Tinua Jai's pastor in Dublin. He came specially for this program, Pastor Tai Makinde of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Jesus Tabernacle, Dublin. Can you please? Sing? We have captains of industry here in our midst. I hope that before we get to some other program, I will have a list so that I can call them and recognize them. Praise the Lord. Before that, let's be all standing as we go into the hymn number three on. On page 11, Old Rugged Cross. Praise Him. Shall we rise, please? Yeah. 
morning we have in our midst this morning a captain of the industry a barrister by training and an entrepreneur by calling barrister Tunde Ayeni is in our midst this morning we also have the former DG Nimasa here Mr. Dakuku Adolf Peter Said is in our midst this morning. You're welcome, sir. Also, we have our stand director, PR Nimasa, Madam Shelly Bay, in the in our midst this morning. As others are identified, I will recognize them. Let us also get us to welcome Dr. Tinuola Gunwa Jai for short tributes. coincidence that um, it's not here written that Mama has exchanged the cross for her crown and I pray that um, we would all strive to do the same. I salute you Mama and I love you so much. Thank you. Um, yeah, unfortunately time wouldn't permit me to take as many people that requested um, to be given the opportunity to take the tributes but should I say permit my manners? Good afternoon, sirs, mas, mommies, daddies, aunties, uncles, sisters, brothers, brethren. Yes, I'm sure we would fall into one of those categories. God bless you all for coming. I would like to please ask or request for uh, probably just a minute per person, please. Um, mommy touched so many lives. And um, sometimes we sometimes, or sometimes we only saw the people that were successful, you know. But she also touched lives of people who 
you know, were struggling. And because she held their hands, they are who they are today by the grace of God. So I don't know if Jones is here. Jones? Jones? Um, do you mind, please? Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. <sighs> mommy, mommy was my mommy, my hero, my mentor, my spiritual teacher. When I heard that, uh, heard you were no more, my heart was broken into a million pieces, particles. I was so confused and devastated. I asked a lot of questions. Why? Why will an angel be taken away from us when we still have a lot to learn from her? Mom, you gave me the key ingredient to success in life, which was prayer, hard work, patience, a loving heart. This life ingredient made me the person I am today. I'm grateful to you, Mom. Many have been blessed through your good deeds, Mom. I'm a testimony because I was touched by you. I realize that only God knows the reason why he has taken you from us now. I know you're in heaven smiling down on us and praying for us. I miss you, Mom. But will never forget you. You will ever, you will forever remain in my heart. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jones. God bless you. I know that you didn't expect that, but thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. So my dad has just said to, to give you the proper picture about Jones. So I think Jones is originally from Benue State who happened to serve in um, Nimasa at the time, isn't it? And I think in the department of, of my mom. And um, that was the beginning of a mother-son relationship. Thank you so much again, Mama. Um, Nkoyo, is she here? Okay. If Nkoyo is not here, I'm just going to move on. All right. Um, yeah, so, yes. Thank God for, uh, thank you for correcting Reverend Andy there. I mean, that's my pastor, and um, he missed that significant um, information. He said, yes, I know Auntie Ivy goes to our church, but uh, yes, I'm pastor's first daughter in Dublin. Um, he adopted me. I went to Dublin at the age of 16, and um, he has since then just taken me under his wings. I salute you, sir. God bless you. Thank you so much. And while I do that, I will just invite you here to please just say one or two things about my precious mother. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Daddy, it is well with you, sir. The Lord will uphold you. He will strengthen you. One day at a time, Jesus will hold you by the hand and he will lead you. And it will be well. With the entire family, we commiserate with you. I come to uh, represent our assistant called, uh, continental overseer. I'm a special assistant to continental overseer. And um, the entire Redeemed Christian Church of God, Republic of Ireland, uh, we really want to commiserate with the entire family, with the friends. In actual fact, I'm not the only one from Ireland here. Yeah? There are quite a few you know, guys there. God bless you. Put your hands up and let's just bless the Lord. When mommy was, well, as uh, Dr. Ajayi said, I first got to 
know her. But she was so well mannered, well behaved. We have quite we had quite a lot of young uh, people then who came over. Many times we wonder why should people send children this young? Uh, but when she came, she was so well mannered that we were looking forward to, oh, you are well brought up. And so there was this looking forward to one day we'll meet your parents. And eventually it did happen that we met them. And all the things we were thinking about, oh, how were they brought up just when we saw in mommy, we're today celebrating a very remarkable woman. Very, very remarkable woman. And it's, it's almost impossible to uh, describe her totally. But the few moments, every time we saw her, we saw one, somebody who had a passion for God, and two, had serious love for her children. And, and that's the one that marveled me. There was nothing you could see and tell that the children were alive. And it didn't matter, even though she was not there with them, she gave them 24-hour monitoring. Uh, same with uh, Sheung also. The, she was always, whenever it is, whenever it's time, and we knew if there was a parent, when, if it mattered and it was necessary, he would be on the next available flight to come. It's not just that, but, well, they are all grown up now, and they have all become uh, big people. But each and every one of their friends, she took them as if they were her children. And as I put in my table, you will hardly see her call anyone by name. It's either, it's my daughter, all of them are my daughters. And we also became our pastor. Mommy, I hope you did it. My... <laughs> so, because wherever, oh, this is my pastor, this is my pastor. She was such a humble woman. And um, it was so difficult to believe that she had passed on. But as we know, we are Christians and we've had the word of God. We thank God for the word we have had. Uh, each and every one of us, God puts lives like this around us so that by the grace of God, we also may learn and emulate them and get to know the Lord. Thank you so much. Mommy, God bless you. Too. Thanks for the opportunity. God bless you. Too. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Why not clap for my pastor properly? <laughs> thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, so um, unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to take others because I'm quite aware that um, time is precious and um, time is far spent as well. Um, yes, I'm taking the next um, on the agenda as well. I would have really loved to make this as fun as possible, but it's quite um, a sober moment for me. It's a difficult day for me today. And I know a lot of people have wondered, how has she coped, you know? Um, is she really grieving? I'll just tell you the truth. I've been riding on the wings of grace. So anybody that knows me knows that my mother was my life. But that's a story for another day. Um, the atmosphere is a bit too tense. So I'd just like us to raise a worship to God this afternoon. Personally, I like to worship in Yoruba because it makes more sense to me. So if we're able and your legs are not hurting, and you're not too elderly, I would like us to please rise as we just give a few minutes to worship our Redeemer this morning. I'm not a good singer. My sister is, but she says I'm a worshiper. I don't know. Praise God. <laughs> Nito ria nure duro city lie. Effi, choir, please help me. Oh, Lua. Nito riti ocean. Nito ria nure duro city. One more time. Oh, Lua. Ni 
your voice to, to this afternoon and sing it to him. as we sing that song. here to, to, to just say a few things really and I know that the question this woman means the world to me by the way and you know every day I strive to be like like her you know she's the sort of person who you would slap her on the right cheek and she would turn to the left and many people have done that time and time again but every single time they did it she kept turning she kept turning she kept turning until I got so angry and I became an advocate. There's nobody I wouldn't have fought for my mom. But even in death, I will still do more. But that's by the way. I know the questions on a lot of our minds. You know, people have asked me, people have called me, people have harassed my dad. What killed Juliana Biodugunwa? And the simple question is, she was called home. And I say that, sparing all of us the nitty gritty details, I was very privileged, as if mom knew that she was passing away. So I was very privileged to share the last two years of my mom's life with her. And it was such a privilege because she poured into me and poured into me and poured into me. Up until a couple of months before her death, you know, and she called me. That was the, the trigger. She said, oh, you know, the, the set of Zion, she calls me Zion. You know, I gave you a trinket box some time ago when I was going to Dublin a few months ago to keep in safe in your safe or wherever. Could you bring them? I said, oh, mom, it's somewhere very far away. I can't bring them now. She said, oh, no, 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 just bring them. So I brought them. I said, okay, fine. It was even Femi that <laughs> grabbed them for me because he, he was the one who talked it away. And then she started selecting the jewelries. 
this was a few months before her death and there was no sign of death in her eyes, by the way. And she said, oh, give this one to Jesus' treasure when she's getting married. Give this one to Crystal when she's 18. Give this one to this. Give this one to that. And I said, mom, that's strange. JT wouldn't be getting married for another, I don't know how many years. So why are you giving her this jewelry? And she's like, oh, no, no, no. You know, since over the last couple of years, I stopped wearing gold. I sh I've just been wearing my pulse. So, you know, let's just do that. And she will call me another day and say another weird thing. And I'll say, mom, why are you doing this? Are you planning to leave me or leave us? And who are you leaving us for? And she will say, I don't know how to speak up. I'm sorry, but something along the lines of, yeah, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying with my property. I'm staying with my children. So I'll let that go. And she's kept doing this weird thing. And then another day she called my dad and says, oh, um, I think we, get, we have to call the, the lawyer, you know, to, to, to make some changes to stuff. And of course, my dad, the boss, started crying. What's this about? And she's like, the same response. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere. So anyways, fast forward to the Thursday. Mommy passed on Monday, the 12th of December, fast forward to, and um, I heard it very loud and clear. I, the Lord, I, I wouldn't be one that would say I often hear from the Lord, but when I do, very sparingly, it's very loud and clear. And the Lord said, I cannot forget those words. I'm calling your mom home. I paused and I looked around. I asked my mom, I said, mom, did you just say anything? She said, no. So I went back to prayer and I heard it. He said, I'm calling your mom home. I said, but God, you can't do that. Every single thing you've asked of me, I've released to you. So this is the only thing that is, that is heavy. She's done this. She's done that. She's touched lives. She's served you. Please don't. But he said, I'm calling your mom home. So I, I said, okay. You've asked or you've, you've, you've told me a very great thing. But if that's really what you want, she's all yours. But I had two major concerns on my mind that day. I said, this is very unexpected. I don't know when you plan to call her home. But um, I haven't been saving for a funeral. So I hope you would be able to provide for us to give her a befitting funeral because that's also biblical. The second one is a bit private. I don't want to mention it here. And then on, um, yeah, I called my sister. I said, she I think we need to get you down to United Kingdom. And she's like, oh, yeah. You know, anyways, long story short, she started to make preparations to come. I didn't know when this was going to happen, but I felt like she needed to come so that we would have a proper discussion. And then on the Saturday, she went to ease herself and she came out and she looked at me she sat on her bed and looked at me and she said Zion I said yes mom she said how can I thank you for all that you've done for me I said mom this is me thanking you for all that you've done for me you don't need to thank me and I, I wanted to know if God had confirmed to her what he had said to me so I asked her the same question for the opt-in's time I said mom why are you talking about all this again? Are you planning to leave us? And if you do, who exactly are you leaving us with? And for the first time in months, she said, Jesus. And she looked away. And um, it dawned on me that she had been hinted. So I've got feeling my head as, you know, the first girl child syndrome. I started to make plans in my head. Oh, I need to get daddy over. I don't know when this is going to happen. In my head, I thought it can be now. So, I, I mean, we, that, they, might sell, they must celebrate their 40th wedding, um, wedding anniversary, which was only a couple of days away. Well, a few days away. And her 65th, which was only a couple of weeks away. So in my head, I'm making all these grand plans. Oh, we have to get Kenny. We have to get daddy. Let's all be here. You know, and she flew in on the Sunday. So Thursday, I got that word. And by the way, that was the day I grieved the most. So if, you've not, if you don't see me crying, it's because I cried already on that day so much. So Thursday, now Sunday, she flies in from Dublin. She only was, it was only a flying visit. She was meant to go back on Tuesday. And on the Monday morning, I went to her room. At, we, had, we had prayed, my sister and I, through the night. So we went to bed about 5 a.m., 
for about an hour, I woke up to pray again. And then it was my brother's phone call. You know, he normally call us every morning. It's, you know, to, I knew what he was asking, you know, what's up, you know, how are you guys? So I, and how is mom doing and all that sort of stuff. So I went down immediately after I'd finished praying and met my sister outside mom's room, cleaning so a mess her baby had made. And um, I said, oh, Sean, how are you? How is mom? Have you seen mom? Is mom awake? And Sean said, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just finished praying with her half an hour ago. I said, oh, fine. So I walked into the room and, um, oh, hi, mom. Good morning, mom. And there was no response. I said, Sean, when last did you say that you spoke to mom again? She said, half an hour ago. I said, okay. So I shook her again. No response. And then the doctor in me kicks in. I check for pulse, nothing. Heart sounds, breath sounds, nothing. I said, show, mom is dead. She said, no, I spoke to her. Only, I prayed with her only 30 minutes ago. I said, well, mom is dead. And then she just flew on the bed, you know, shaking her. And then my husband thankfully was walking from home that day. God bless you, Femi. He's been such a rock. He's been such a rock. I don't say this often, Femi, but I couldn't have asked for a better man by my side. Thank you. So I called him. I said, please, he was in a very important meeting at work. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. You know, but he, he dropped everything he was doing and he came down. I said, there's a bit of an emergency. Mom, I told him, Mom isn't breathing. And then I just said, look, mom is gone. You know, and he wept. And, you know, I was very angry because I'm like, why would you sneak out on me? I only went to bed for an hour, a couple of hours, and you're gone? No. And then we started a session, well, let's pray. We have to pray. And my Reverend Sam, Reverend Sam, yes, he bears me witness with Pastor Kuku. They were the two people I called. I said, don't say anything to daddy and don't say anything to Kenny. But this has happened. Mom is gone but we're going to pray. And God bless them so much. They jumped into prayers. Reverend Sam, bless him, called a, a couple of other people to, to intercede. And my sister and I and my husband just kept praying. It was looking like nothing was going to happen, but about an hour, 40 minutes into the prayers, my mom came back. Again, it's recorded like Reverend Sam put in his tribute. It's all on video. She came back breathing. She came back looking at us. She came back, moving her hands, playing with her grandson. The only thing she wasn't doing was she wasn't talking. She came back. When I said, squeeze my hands, she squeezed my hands. When I said, you know, move your legs, she moved your legs. I moved her legs. When I said, nod, she would nod. So we're excited and we shared the news, even sent the videos to the pastors praying in Nigeria just to encourage them. And we're all so joyful. We prayed through the whole day, 12 hours, nonstop. My sister, myself, my husband. Needless to say that that was the end of his job that day. My daddy had previously said, you know, we would have a Thanksgiving session as a family that night on, on, on WhatsApp anyways. So I didn't even act like anything was going on. So yes, at 9 p.m. at time, I called him and, you know, I didn't tell him. Mom was there, breathing, steady, pulse, as strong, as regular, beautiful, if I may say so. But I didn't tell him what had happened because I thought God has come this far. He's going to perfect it and we'll share the testimony. So we did our Thanksgiving. I think they asked, where's mom? I said, oh, she's sleeping. You know, we did everything and um, we finished. When we finished, my sister said, it's been such a long day. I'm going to have a bit of a nap. Moreover, if I don't even have a nap, I was with the one with her last night and <laughs> she died. I don't know what I did wrong. <laughs> so just take your thing back. Like, you know, I said, well, I snuck out on her and she passed. So I'm going to stay right by her bedside. I'm not going to leave. So I said, you go have a nap. She just put a mattress on the floor. I'm sorry I'm taking your time, but I just wanted to give you a, a very, you know, a, a brief background into, into what you would call a glorious exit. You know, so, and um, yes, she wasn't even asleep for 20 minutes. When I was holding my mom's hand, you know, all through, and it was, I didn't tell her to squeeze at this time, but she squeezed really tightly. So I thought she wanted to say something, but at that point, her breath became, you know, shallow and shallow. Again, like I said, I've seen people die one too many times. So I grabbed her, I said, mom, you're not leaving, are you? But the more I spoke, 
you know, the more her breath dissipated. So I rang, I, I tapped Shion quickly. I, I said, I don't want you to miss this moment, Shion. I think mom is, I think mom is going. So she flew again on the bed and, you know, held my mom's face. I held my mom at the back of her head. And um, she said, mom, wait, don't go. Mom, wait, don't go. But even as Shion held her, she took her last breath. Now, I'm not quite sure what you make of that. But uh, I think ever since that day, I used to be so scared of dying, but ever since I witnessed my mom pass away the way she did, I've got no fear of death. Absolutely no fear of death. So I think this is just a word. I'm not sure if it's going to reassure some of us, but this is basically what happened days leading to my mom's passing. So um, when you feel sad, when you feel discouraged, when you feel like, why? You know, when you feel like, but God, you don't do anything wrong. You just remember this song. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. Thank you. Um, my brother told me that Prophet Olo Poroku is also in the house. And I would like to say welcome, sir. Is he gone? Oh, thank you, in absentia. But yes, thank you all so much for listening. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. That was a touching tribute very theory. I have a, sorry, before we proceed, let me recognize other people, other important people. Every one of us is important. But I have been given some names. I need to mention them. Pastor Oluwokoroko of Love of Christ Chapel, Oregon. We appreciate your coming, sir. We also have in our midst Chief Adebayo Sarumi, former managing director of Nigeria Post Authority. We have Mr. Akin Akin Yosue, trustee of Nimasa Retirees. We have Ms. Ms. Ego Umokocha, trustee of the Nimasa Retirees Association. The note here says that she, that Madam Gua was her last ball before she retired. She was a former deputy director, Maritime Labor Services Department. We have Barista Bio Igwe, in the director of Cabotage Nimasa. Mrs. S.N. Asagwara, former director of Marine Environment Management, Nimasa. We also have Mr. Abari Ahmed, assistant director, who was Mama's PA at MEM department. We also have Bola Akure, representative of Maritime Labor Department. In our midst, we also have current serving directors, Mrs. Neka Obianyo and Ms. Simi Daju and Mrs. Rita Ebuche. We also have one of Reverend Gua's uh, past uh, pastors, Reverend Feyi Akinbele of Trinity Church of Divine Encounter in Amis too. Time is fast spent. We have poem recited by the children. Are we ready? Thank you again, sir. Um, yeah, I'm just at the last minute there. Just let's say we didn't get our acts together. So they have sort of 
pushed me to the front to do this, which is fine. Um, I know time is fast spent, but my mom will not forgive me if I failed to say thank you to Pastor Mrs. Kuku. She has been a rock. She has been, I, I don't know if we could just stand up and say thank you to her for me, please. She has been a rock. You know, when you, you know, when I looked up and down and I said, who will I go to? I call her 1 a.m. She answers my call. She's literally been by my side throughout, actually been by my family's side throughout from the planning of the service of songs till this very minute. And even in church, she's texting me, making sure that things have gone perfectly. God bless you, ma. I love you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma. So yes, it's the broken chain. That's the title of our poem. We little knew that morning that God was going to call your name. In life, we loved you dearly. In death, we do the same. It broke our hearts to lose you. You did not go alone. For part of us went with you the day God called you home. You left us peaceful memories. Your love is still our guide. And though we cannot see you, you are always at our side. Our family chain is broken and nothing seems the same, mom. But as God calls us one by one, the chain will link again. Somebody said, oh, God will call you when you're 98. I don't know. He called my mom at 64. All I can say is eventually God will call us all one by one and the chain will link again. I honor you, mom, forever. Praise the Lord. The program is getting very emotional now. Even me, where I think I'll be hard, man. The thing don't reach me. Praise the Lord. It's time for prayers for the family. And it will be led by the National Coordinator of New Generation Bible Church, Reverend Dr. Sam Eboibui. Praise the Lord, everyone. How I had wished that I would not just have to do anything today. I, before going ahead to ask the family to stand for prayers, maybe I should make these statements. Reverend Abiodun Juliana Goa was my, should I say was or is? Because it's only now I'm, when I saw her yesterday, that was when actually, wow, so me, you've transited. She was my associate for about two decades. And quite strange and difficult that as I try to put things together, these two decades that we were together, was there ever any day that we had disagreement? She had a way of speaking truth to authority without hurting you. She had a way of letting you know the path you should take. She will communicate to you, deliver the intention without getting you hurt. 
She was falling down with so much of God's wisdom. So much of God's wisdom. Now, we had the last time, let me say this, that we had the program of our bishop. That day, I was right there in the hall, walking everywhere, walking everywhere. She came to me and said, my reverend, I want to see you. And I went to her. She said, I have seen you walking up and down this morning. She said, now I am not going to have my seat until you find a place to sit down. I thought she was joking. Anywhere I was going, she was following me. She said, no, I am not going to have my seat until you are seated to be part of the program. Reverend Mrs. Abiodogua. She referred to me as a confidant. Apparently because if there were any issues she wanted to discuss with anybody on earth, she would call me. And as ministers, as pastors, we know that when you hear conversations that bother on counseling from anybody, they are meant to be very, 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 very confidential. And so there are so many things that she confided in me that we had to go to God for and pray about in all aspects of her life. And so, when that few, few weeks before the event occurred, I was talking to Dr. Zion and we had to institute prayer team for her. We were praying and praying and praying up until that early morning that she called me to tell me what was happening. Why am I saying this? Just to corroborate something. When we kept praying, she was sending me videos. After she had told me that she had passed on, I had to ask some two of my pastors to go to the husband's house to go and stay with him pending when we plan a strategy to deliver the message or the news to him. If you were in my shoes, what would you do? He was part of the people praying and now we are now going to send a message to him to let him know that the wife had transited. I was asking Dr. Zion, can't you just tell him over there? He said, no, she can't do this message. So I will be the one to do this message. So while we were praying and praying and praying, she sent a video to me later to tell me, can you see that mom is back? She's breathing? And that was true. She was breathing and we, she was shaking her hand. So that gave us confidence. We were uh, confident, we were highly motivated that this woman would not go. But apparently we didn't know. That time she came back breathing and moving her hands. It's just for her to tell us that God has answered her prayers. But she came back to say, good night. So, around 7 p.m., before that time, I had sent people that were meant to go and deliver the news to him that, please, go back home. She's still alive. So, two of my pastors now went back home. We were happy, excited. Up until that last call, Dr. Zion made to me. I, when I saw that call, fear came upon me. I said, Lord, may it not be the news of the inevitable. And thereafter, I called her. I said to me, mom has passed on. Final challenge. What was the final challenge? Don't forget, that same day we are sent two pastors to the husband. And they have not, not gone back home. Because we felt that she had come back. But the news had been delivered. She was not gone. So we had to plan again on that strategy. The following day. To finally go to break the news to him. And that was why I said the most difficult assignment I've ever handled in life was how to go and deliver that news to the husband. And so the following day, we had Kenny there. We had to ensure that Kenny was told to go back to the father's house that we were going to do final prayer for God in heaven to hear so that mommy can be alive. 
Can you, of course, anything you would take, can you to do for mommy to leave, he would do it. So he came down that day and behold, my pastors were there. Kenny was there. I was looking at Pastor Joseph Gua. How will I tell this man that the wife has gone to be with the Lord? We prayed and prayed, asking God for wisdom. How do I deliver the news? Where do I start from? Do we worship the Lord? Do we pray? But thank God, God gave us wisdom. I asked them to just open one side of the door. Let me deliver this news. I was rest assured that the husband will not be hostile, but I wasn't too sure about Kenny. So, I said, let me deliver the news. In the event, there's while I hear said I can cook you for some time, I take over <laughs> before coming back to tell them. Praise the Lord, everyone. But thank God, the grace of the Lord was enough for us, was highly sufficient for us to deliver the news. And here we are today. We do know that our beloved sister, our beloved friend, our colleague, my own colleague for two over two decades, has gone home to be with the Lord. Before I pray, hear this. In the event you are above 60 years, I said this in Canada last week. In the event you are above 60 years, there's a knock at your door. Boo, boo, boo. Very soon. We don't go by our ages, no. It's when your assignment is over upon the surface of the earth. And like the preacher uh, uh, preached, when that time comes, Oh, we have not forgotten about Abraham and the, and the, and the poor and the poor and the, and the rich man and, the, and, the, and Lazarus. This is the message. This is the message. If there's anything Reverend Mrs. Biorugua is saying to the children, saying to the husband, saying to every one of us, we be different from the last communication you ever had with her. What is she saying now? She's preaching a message of love. A message of peace. A message of unity. Why? Because where she is, the opposite of those I've mentioned are not found there. Regardless of how many years you have found the church, whether you are a titled minister, a bishop or pope, if you don't have such things, Love in your heart, you can't be there. You cannot be there, and that's why they will read to us very soon when the trumpet will sound. Guess what? Only the dead in Christ shall resurrect. Only the dead in Christ. We have men that have died in church, but not in Christ. They will not resurrect. In the event they resurrect, they shall do so unto what? Damnation. Damnation. So, it will be very, very wickedly of you for someone who died without Christ for them to do party and you are eating chicken and you are taking rice. Unknown to you, if that man, regardless of the title, he had here tonight, if it was not with Christ, he will burst hell open. Within you write the Bible, it is so. It is appointed unto man to die once and death after what? Judgment. God case no appeal. So you have life right now. This is just one crucial moment. One final opportunity. You may not be able to hear that message again. That is the message she is preaching to you and I. Right now. Another message to you and I. Message of peace, love, and unity. Shall I be given everyone? Before I pray for the family, help me recognize our ministers who came here today to officiate in this meeting. I, Reverend Mike Abiodun, where are you? Let's appreciate him. Let's appreciate Reverend Mike Abiodun. Thank you so much. Reverend Clement Ezewale, where are you? See here. Let's appreciate him. Reverend Mr. Fukel Mbaibu, let's appreciate her. Reverend Andy Nakodia, the guy that minister today. 
from Ikeja branch. Pastor Shola Kuku, the backbone. Thank you. Pastor Shukwemeka Ago. The way I'm doing this to you. I'm not wearing color. Pastor Tukwale Boy, where is she? Thank you. Is that how you appreciate them? Please, sir. Eh? Pastor Bola Tobele, where are you? Thank you. Pastor Dikpa Ojo, the anchor man here today, where are you? You are there. Thank you very much. Pastor Kule Lashinde. Pastor Shola Adenekon. Where is our Pastor Grace? So sorry. Let's appreciate her. Was it there? It was a mistake. Thank you. Pastor Modupe Adekoya. Are you here? Lady Evangelist Nelly Rose. Osha. Is well with you. Help me to appreciate our beloved Mommy G.O. Reverend Dr. Antonia Elomobo. A woman with the eagle's eye. Thank you so much. And if you are a pastor from other churches who are here today, would you please stand up for us to appreciate you? All the men of God in our midst here today, would you please stand up? Let's appreciate you. All the men of God, thank you so much. Oh, Feyi Akimbele, Ekbefuere. God bless you all. It's well with you. Thank you so much. Ah, sorry, your name will not be omitted on the day we are entering heaven in Jesus' name. Pastor Wada, let me appreciate her. <laughs> Thank you so much. Praise God, everyone. Okay, it's time for us to pray for the family. Pastor Joseph Goa. We are highly encouraged since the wife went to be with the Lord. He used, he has been supplying us with uh, devotionals and some powerful comments and prayers every morning. I thought, because he has not been too happy with the Lord when that happened, I thought we would have ceased doing that. He has been doing that every day. So that, that annoyance with God lasted just for one day, just 24 hours. Himself and God have since reconciled. Shall I be given everyone? <laughs> of course, he knows he doesn't have any choice. His only, quarter, his only quarter was that, God, I told you that for the wife to go, he should go first. Why would you allow the wife to go? That is not about contract. This is the truth. God only loaned her to you. God loaned her to you as your wife. Load her to you as your mother. Load her to you as your sister. That's all. So when the deal was over, went home. Went home. So it's not left for you and I to also work out our salvation. How? In fear and what? In trembling. So, please, family. Husband and wives and children. Doctor Tinu and Jais, Doctor Yes, Doctor Tinu's husband. Thank you so much. If not for you, Femi. If not for you, we won't have this program today. You were the one that took her yesterday from England. We were at the airport. She was. He was the one that enabled her to come to Nigeria. We told ourselves we're not waiting for a body. We were waiting for our beloved resident pastor. I went to the airport to receive her yesterday. When they asked, I'm not going to receive a body. I am going to welcome back to Nigeria my precious and beloved associate resident pastor. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being the vessel that God used to do that for us today. Lord, we honor you also in Jesus' name. Would you please move forward so that men of God, let's come and pray for them. Just stretch for the hands towards them. Let's begin to decree that it shall be well with you. Let's decree that it shall be well with you. The eyes of the Lord will watch over you continually. No evil will come near you. The Bible says, I shall be unto her a wall of fire round about and God shall be the glory in the midst of her. It is well with your soul. It is well with your spirit. It is well with your body. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Father. You move forward in all that you do. Reverend, is there will you please
prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for this beautiful family. Father, your beauty that has been in this family will not diminish. We not reduce. Rather, we increase in the name of Jesus Christ. This family is a united family. Lord, they will continue in unity. They will continue in concord. They will continue in oneness. In the name of Jesus Christ, the father of the home, the children, the grandchildren, the in-laws will be one. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that even as the servant of God has mentioned, the eyes of the Lord is upon you, watching over you for good. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because the eyes of the Lord are upon you, no evil eye shall see you. Any evil eye looking for you will go blind. No evil hand, no evil hand shall be straight towards your direction. Any evil hand straight towards your direction will dry up and be broken to pieces. In the name of Jesus Christ, any evil tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn and they are forever condemned in Jesus' name. You will wash strong, wash great, move forward, grow until you become very great in the name of Jesus Christ. Every eye that behold you shall acknowledge that you are the seed that the Lord has blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. And with long life, the Lord will satisfy you and show you his salvation in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Every mic. One minute, please. Thank you. Show prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we commit the family afresh into your hands and we decree, Lord, by your own hand, you will keep them strong in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you will be a mother to them in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that their paths will be led by the Lord in the name of Jesus. This one will not make errors in life in the name of Jesus. This one will not make mistakes in life in the name of Jesus. Above all, longevity, you will satisfy them in the name of Jesus. We hereby declare, Lord, that longevity becomes the order of this family in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' precious name we pray. And now, lastly, Mommy Jew. Precious Father, Lord, we exalt your name concerning the Goa family. Our Lord, we thank you for what you have done, for what you are doing, and for what you will yet do. Lord, as the greatest force on earth, the body of Christ, we commit them into your mighty hands. Your mighty hand that is able to keep, to protect, to shield, to bless. We pray you will prosper them. The wisdom of God to carry on in life will receive on their behalf. The comfort of the Holy Ghost, that joy the, the oil of joy for mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You will endow them right now, Father. Lord, you will endow our beloved pastor, Olu Gua. You will endow the wonderful, beautiful children, grandchildren, extended family in the mighty name of Jesus. You will, ex you will grant all of us, the church, the friends, and everybody in the name of Jesus. We cover her legacy with the blood of Jesus. You said, Daddy, the memory of the, of the righteous is blessed. I prophesy the blessing of God upon your family, upon the husband, the children, and everybody. You said, our latter end will increase greatly. We prophesy greatness. Greatness, greatness into the Goa's family. Greatness in the name of Jesus. You say you will give your angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. 
we prophesy and we decree angelic protection over every one of them in the mighty name of Jesus. Above all, I prophesy and I declare God's goodness and mercy. God's goodness and mercy. God's goodness that cannot be quantified. And his mercies that are unending will abide with you and follow you all the days of your lives. And you all will remain in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much, mommy. We, we are, thank you so much. We are comforted that the children are prayer warriors. Tinu and Shehu, the prayers they prayed for mommy, the prayers they prayed, awesome prayers. My, oh my. Uh, let me say this to us in the presence of Tinu. Your mommy said I should tell you this. One of those things she was always telling me why she was confiding in me. She said, help me to thank Zion. Help me to thank Zion. She said that many times. Help me to thank Zion. When she was said that to me, as tears are coming from her eyes right now, this first time I've seen tears coming from her face. I know you have been standing and standing. Yeah, you find a lady on her wedding day. She was on 40 days fast before her wedding. When we were at the registry, the man said, you may kiss the bride. He did the man that is not a time to kiss. Why? She was still fasting. <laughs> not a time. So, she's always come rest her shoulder that she's in Nigeria in the last two, three weeks must have been fasting. That's what she does. Anytime she understands there is a battle to fight, she knows she has to stand in the gap. And she told me the mother is more alive right now. She has to be strong for the family. And that day I was speaking to her, she has not taken anything. For many weeks, the Lord will sustain you. So she's hearing me that I'm thanking you. She said, I should thank you for all that you did for that. She cannot pay you back. Same goes with other children. We commit you to the hands of the Lord that he will strengthen you and uphold you on every side. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Man of God, thank you so much for those wonderful testimonies. Uh, because we understand what is happening over there. We send our children abroad they come back, you know what they do? We send f some earrings here, some earrings here. We find so many around them. But these ones are actually very different people. Very, very different people, you know. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when it's all happened, he would not turn aside from me. So, they have a request as we move from here to the great site that you want to be very, very confident, uh, very, very private. Uh, train the open right now. Once. Ministers, please come and ask that to people. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Reverend Sam. God bless you. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, while I'm just making that clear, I will just take a few other announcements that we have as well. On behalf of my dad, um, he's asked me to say thank you to every single one of you. My brother will give the official vote of thanks, but I particularly ask that I thank New Generation Bible Church worldwide, especially the, the Lagos um, parishes, most, most especially the VI one. So God bless you, sir. So God bless you, ma. Thank you for looking after daddy. They literally took rotors, took turns in visiting my dad up until we arrived and even after. I have not seen greater love. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Sam. Um, also, my sister has asked me to recognize the presence of Pastor Mason, Brother Michael. I don't know if you want to stand up just so that people can see you, please. <laughs> Bra Michael Olabade, Bra Dipo Onye Loye. Um, they're all from um, RCCG Jesus Center Dublin. So they're all the way from Dublin. God bless you, sirs. Thank you so much. Um, also, um, we know that people dread a papa, but if you fancy uh, a light meal, there's a mini reception at the house. 
For those of us who don't know it, it's 35 Park Lane, uh, Papa Giari. It would be lovely to see a few faces to talk about my mom and just, because it's going to be quite an, a heavy afternoon. If not, you're just going to send me to bed to go cry. So please come if you can. But if you can't, we do appreciate that you've been here. God bless you. And so for the internment, um, yes, fortunately and unfortunately, it's not even, that's not my rule. It's the rule of the place. They can't take more than 20 people. But other people that want to be there can stay outside the gates. But for respect for our mom, we just want to request that this should be just the immediate family. And by that, I mean the Ulema Iwagunwa family. Of course, um, Reverend Sam will decide on um, three or four ministers who can be a part of it. And I would also say, Jones, mom would have loved you to be there. So please come. Of course, my mother-in-law, Mrs. Ajayi, you're most welcome. My brother's mother-in-law. Is that right? Is that right? Yes, Mrs. Lawal, you're also welcome. Yeah, we, it can't take more than 20 people. would have loved a lot more people, but just for, for the sake of respect and honor, you're all welcome to obviously stay at the peripheries if you want to. Thank you so much. And um, I said I was going to say this out because it's not a lie. <laughs> My grandmother had, I don't know, I met seven of them children. A few had died before I came. But I met seven. And I'm not afraid to say that. My mother was the best of them all. Um, I'm, that's not open to debate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She was the very best. She was the very best of all of them. And little wonder, God called her home. On this note, I would like to say thank you from the very depths of my heart. Uh, sir, from the side, you reached out to me when you didn't even know me. Thank you. I could start to call names, but I know time is not on our side. Reverend Sam, God bless you for me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I mean, I've never seen people like the Genites before. When we worried about who was going to take hold of my dad yesterday, going to the airport to pick up my mom, they all rose to the challenge. Like, it was, I went there and it was as if, you know, the president or, I mean, my mom was bigger than the president of any country, but that was how I felt. Even, I'm sure the, the funeral guys, the patrician guys thought, ah, kilagbe kileju, what is this story? Why are you all here? They were all here for me, Keja from VI. I was overwhelmed. Thank you so much. I saw it all. I still say it. Thank you. Thank you all for standing by us. Thank you to everyone who has supported us, held our hands. We see you all, and we are grateful. From people we least expected, God bless you. And in your time of need, my prayer is that strangers will be in a rush. That was my mom's prayer for me, and it's still working. We'll be in a rush to bless you. We'll be in a rush to honor you. Thank you for honoring my mom today. Thank you for honoring my family. I recognize the presence of my mom's sisters. Thank you for coming. Are you, are you giving me this phone? Are you dashing me this phone? <laughs> you said few faces, your, your private residence, few faces. You will see many faces today. So go on, go on prepare, I understand. We thank uh, Mr. Uh, Peter Said. Thank you so much. I know you were there last time when she was uh, 60. Sister Edbedi, you were there. You were one of the few uh, DJs that she talked about so very wonderfully, very graciously. No wonder you are here today. Thank you so much for keeping that board of fishing. Thank you, God. We call it honor you. And all of that countries of industry, thank you so much, God. We call it bless you all in Jesus' name. Okay, so you have heard just 20. Um, am I privileged to be there? Okay, that's for no problem. <laughs> say, say I should appoint uh, three of us that will be there. So I'm, I'm going to do that now. More, three of us. Mommy Jew is there. I will be there. So I will give you a number. One, two, three, four, five. Whatever that pick number is. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay. We will need to.
Sorry, I don't want to take your job, please. Let's appreciate Pastor Dick Ojo to come and conduct this assignment. Thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Kenny, are you ready? Vote of thanks from Kenny Gua. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We would like to thank you all for coming to out to celebrate the Enigma, Enigma and one in a lifetime woman that is that is Reverend Mrs. Juliana Biadogua. We also sincerely thank you very much for coming to com commensurate with the Olumai Wagumas as we send forth our matrack. God bless you all and safe journey on your way to your various destinations. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. God bless. This young man wants to take over the job. Praise the Lord. We are finally at the last item. And this part of the program and it's time to sing the recessional hymn. Shall we be upstanding while the praise team lead us? Let's stand for the recessional hymn, page 11. Meet me there. Bye. 
us no more meets me Sing stanza three now. Where the haps of angels ring and the blessed forever sing in the palace of the king meets me there. Where in sweet communion blend. Chorus, meet me there, meet me there, meet me there, where the tree of life is blooming, meet me there, when the storms of life are o'er. No more meet me there. Meet me there. Meet me there. Meet me there. Where the tree of life is blooming. Meet me there. When the storm. Yeah. Mm -hmm.